Are you glad you're saved today? Amen. Amen. I'm trying to bring something really encouraging to you today from the Word of God. And uh, Matt, if you want to put the title of my lesson today up, wait till you see my new home. Wait till you see my new home. I'm smiling today. I have a residence, but I've got a brand new home coming. And that's uh, from the Word of God. God is building it. And as I talk about my new home, I want you to think about your new home from the same aspect as the Bible tells me that I'm having my new home. That way, I'll not only leave here knowing happy and I've got a new home, you'll leave here happy knowing that you got one too. Amen? So we're going to have a brand new dwelling. Uh, let's go to the Word of God in the 14th chapter of John to start with, and then we're going back into, into the book of Revelation. And I'm going to show you some cool things today. All right? Jesus in the... Red Letter Words edition are from his lips, and this is the promise of Jesus. I want you to know when Jesus makes a promise, he keeps it. What he says goes. What he says he will do, he will do. I may add, it is as good as done when he promises it. John chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Now, that's the promise of Jesus. I love the personal pronouns. You see, he wrote this to me. And he wrote it to you, too. Because when you say me, that's you, all right? You know, the word of God is to every soul. And the thing about it is, we are living in a troubled world. And until we come to know Christ as Savior, we are a troubled person person, because there cannot be peace in our heart outside of the will of God and being saved. If you happen to be listening and you've never accepted Christ, you do not know what you are missing, because the home that he's preparing for me and for you and that personal relationship that he writes in those personal pronouns, I am going to prepare a place for you. If you happen to be unsaved and never accepted him, he's still got a place he's building for you if you will find how to accept it and tap into it. But you must open your heart and you must accept it. If I had today, if I had a, a key to a brand new home and I said, here it is. Okay, there's a, there's a million dollar house right here. I got the key. It's yours. If you accept it, you have to come up and you have to take the key out of my hand and receive it before you can ever enjoy it. Jesus Christ has got a key to a mansion in heaven for every person. He says, here it is, come and get it. You must believe it and you must receive it as your very own personal home. And he said, don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, and a lot of folks say, well, I believe in God, but they have never been saved yet. They don't necessarily have never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And he goes on to say, whether I go, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas said, we don't know what you're talking about. How, how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And everyone that he, he, that he saves, he's got that place 
in heaven that he's preparing. And he has promised, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. And so we, we know that uh, he's going to take us home to the Lord. It'll be at the point of death when we leave, or it could be a point at the first phase of the second coming of Christ at the rapture where we meet him in the air. But at the end of that seven-year tribulation period, we'll be talking about all those plagues. Uh, we're in heaven with our with the Bema Seat judgment, and then those judgments pour out, and then we're going to start now. Let's go over to the book of Revelation, and I want to show you something very exciting because we're going to look at the Lord coming back with the tens of thousands of the saints back down to the earth for that kingdom age, for that thousand-year millennium age. And let's go to chapter 19, and I want us to, I want us to see verse 7. It talks in verse 7 just prior to him coming back, because when Christ comes back, in heaven, he's coming back with all of the saints of God. We talked about that. Over a billion plus 10,000 times 10,000 added on to a billion coming from heaven back down to this earth. And then uh, in verse 7, let me read this. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, that's to Christ, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. I want to talk about that, the bride and the bridegroom, because that's exactly what, what he's referred to. Christ, Christ is referred to as the bridegroom. We who are the saved are the bride of Christ. The bride of Christ is not the Baptist church. It's the body of believers from the, uh, from the uh, birth of Jesus Christ to that first phase rapture. Those born and saved in that period of time is referred to as the bride of Christ. All right? Everyone that's saved during that time. And, that's, and please note this. The Old Testament saints can never be the bride of Christ because only those from the birth of Christ, who've been saved by faith, believing and having his salvation. Then when he comes again, he's coming down, he's building his bride, and then he's coming back from heaven to take his bride or his wife home, the bride and the bridegroom. Now, you know how that works. Uh, when there's, there's a young man that lives off someplace and, and a bride that lives off someplace else, and he's searching for a, uh, for a wife, what does he do? He meets her, they court a little bit, and finally, when, when the marriage happens, now this verse 7 is the marriage of the Lamb because he's coming to get his bride from heaven. And all of us in that period of time go home, whether we died and re resurrected or whatever, he's coming back and we're going to meet him in the air He's coming to get his bride and take us home. Now, after, after the wedding ceremony itself and after the marriage, what happens? You go to a, to a coronation or you go to a reception, and there is a great meal, a festivity. Now, that festivity is going to be down on earth after when Jesus brings his bride home. He's coming in the air to get his bride. We are coming back down to the earth for that thousand-year reign. The marriage of the supper of the Lamb has come. The rapture's happened. He's take, the bridegroom has come and taken his wife, which are all those Christians home. We're coming back down to the earth for that marriage supper of the Lamb. Let's look at verse 8. And, and to her... Uh, was was granted that she should have, this is the bride, to her uh, was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he said unto me, Write, 
Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. There it is, the marriage of the Lamb, the marriage supper of the Lamb, and we're coming back with the Lord when he calls us up in the air to come back for that marriage supper of the Lamb, uh, for that kingdom age reign uh, where the devil is all in that bottomless pit. And uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be skipping uh, this uh, the, uh, right now. I want you to see connected to this, the actual coming of the Lord, the scripture in the Bible where he's coming. And at verse 10, he said, I fell at his feet to worship him. That's the angel that told him these things. And he said unto me, see thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of my brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. All right, now, he's telling him he's coming for the marriage supper of the Lamb. He's getting ready. But now we're still in heaven with all of these tens of millions and millions of people that's there getting ready to come back down to earth. Okay, if you can just imagine this, the dead in Christ have already risen glorified bodies, praise the Lord, amen. And here we are looking now to see on the brink of heaven coming back with the Lord Jesus. Look at verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a, bit, a, a, a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. That's none other than Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word. That's Jesus. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And when he's coming back from heaven, his name is called the Word of God. And now look, now because he's not alone, he's coming back with all of us, all those, all those uh, souls in heaven that's redeemed and glorified bodies to be with the Lord coming back. And verse 14, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, linen white and clean, and out of his mouth goeth a sword, a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he should rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lord. He's coming back now from the brink. Now, why does it describe him with eyes of fire and, and the wrath of God? Because remember, the culmination of that seven years is happening. Because remember the 21 judgments that was poured out? At the end of those 21 judgments, when that last vile bowl of wrath of God is poured out, Jesus and we are on the brink of heaven, and that's where he's coming back down with us. And don't worry about fighting the battle of Armageddon. Jesus does it all by himself. All right? Wipes them all out. Now, I'm going to skip this part because the next few verses talks about the battle of Armageddon, and it talks about the doom of the beast and the false prophet and the Antichrist and the devil and the doom of all the kings of the earth because God's flattening everything out. He's ready to come back down to this earth. There's going to be an awful mess after Armageddon. Blood to the horse's bridles. But you know what? He sent in the fowls of the air from all over the world to clean it all up. God's got a special cleanup plan. But he's going to come back to this earth 
and you don't have to worry about stepping in blood because the Bible talks about the 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 the, the islands are going to flee away and and uh, he's going to take care of all of that and so then he's going to set up that twenty that that thousand year uh, reign and that's listed now in chapter twenty and I'm going to skip chapter twenty for right now and it talks about the doom. Uh, of the devil and the Antichrist, and it talks about the great white throne judgment and all those things, and I'm going to save that for tonight. Now, Brother Dave, I told him I had a, an exciting sermon called the, the Doom of Devil Worship, and boy, we have that going on. Hey, man, if you saw the little clip prior to the how they introduced the Olympics in Paris with a, with, with a it's sick. It is sick. I'll, I'll be mentioning that later. And I'm, I want to talk about my home now. I'm not going to. Yeah, we've got enough of this stuff for now. Don't miss tonight at 6 o'clock, all right, because I'm going to talk about the, the doom of Satan and the end and that battle of Armageddon. And I'm also going to talk about some other things about how Satan worship will never, ever be anymore. And that's, that's an exciting thing. So if you'd like to get rid of devil worshipers and Satan worshipers, don't miss it tonight because it's going to be, it's going to be a great sermon. Brother Dave said, I'll do the singing and you do the preaching. I said, all right, we'll do it tonight, okay? So let's be here at 6 o'clock this evening for that. But right now I want to go to, uh, I want to show you my home. Let's go to Revelation chapter 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. That's my new home right there. The holy city, New Jerusalem. I know it's my, I'm going to show you, be your home too, amen? But before that, I want to talk about the new heaven and the new earth because there was sin in the original heaven, and that has to be destroyed, and it will. And also in, uh, in uh, the, this earth is the one we're on right now. Let, let's do something. Let's go back to the book of Second Peter for a minute. One minute. Let's put our hand over here. Second Peter, Chapter Three. Verse One. The second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure mind by the way of remembrance, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments uh, of us, the apostles, and the Lord, uh, of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that then there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby by the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. That's the great deluge right there, all right? Now, in verse 7, but the heavens, get this, but the heavens and the earth, which are now, this is this earth, and the heavens is here now, but the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and the perdition of ungodly men. 
But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall burn with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. So the fire is going to perish. Heaven has to be destroyed because that's where Lucifer sinned against God. There's going to be a new heaven and there's going to be a new earth. And we know that when all of those billion plus millions come back with the Lord and the, and, and the battle of Armageddon's cleaned up and that thousand year reign, there's going to be all kinds of people, you know, given places to rule and reign over angels and whatever. It's going to be the saints of God. Remember, the, the, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. And today... The Christians are last. This coming time, we're going to be first. You're going to have a brand new home. You're going to be number one. Those that were first are going to be last because God is righteous. He's fair. He's awesome. And so when, when that happens... This earth is going to be burned and melt with fervent heat. All right? That's why I believe that the final lake of fire is going to be probably this earth that's burned up. Those that love the world may have their taste of it. They can have their choice. God is making a lake of fire, and we'll talk about that as the end of those Christ rejectors as well as the, uh, the, the, the wicked kings of the earth. So we're coming back down to be with the Lord. Now let's look at something else right here. Um, verse 4. And saying, they say, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Now, in verse, verse 7, But the heavens and the earth which are now are kept in store for judgment. Let's go back over now. I just want to stop and show you that about Peter writes about the new heaven and the new earth. And where my new home is right here in Revelation 21, it starts by saying, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. So that's going to last a long time. And remember, there's a, new, there's a holy city in New Jerusalem coming down. And uh, I, I love this. And I want to read what, what God says about that. He doesn't stop right there, okay? In verse, in verse 3, I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Now get some of our benefits here. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And you ought to be saying, Amen, praise God right there. You know, well, those changed bodies, just think about it. God's going to wipe away every tear. And there'll be no more death. There'll be no more sorrow. There'll be no more crying. The former things that we uh, struggle with and wrestle with down here will all be gone. There'll be no more. They passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. How do you know that this is going to happen? Because he reaffirms it by saying these words are true and 
faithful. It is as good as done. And he said unto me, and I just, it is done. Well, how about that? It is done. It's past tense, but it's a future happening. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, the unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part that burn, which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now I want to show you something amazing. The Lamb's wife, which is the bride of Christ, and the new Jerusalem. The new Jerusalem is coming down. Please don't miss this. This is the blessing that you don't want to miss. There came out that there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's uh, the, the lamb's wife. Wow, the angel says, Come, I want to show you the bride. Who's the bride? We. Who are we? We are the we are the lamb's wife. He is the bridegroom. We are the bride. Sorry to call you the bride, but it's not a female gender or male gender. Amen. We are the bride of Christ. And this angel says, I want to show you the bride. Now I want to stop again to just to reiterate. Who is the bride of Christ? Christ came into the world, you know, to sacrifice salvation and give his life. And from that birth of Christ to complete salvation right on till the rapture and the bride is taken away, that is the bride of Christ. All those saved after, after the rapture can't be the bride of Christ. They're not even committed to, to uh, they're not even commanded or committed to, to worship Christ. Christ or to receive Christ. Their message is worship God because Christ, the Christ thing and his bride, it's over. Well, think about the bride of Christ. Christ came into the world. He saves all of our souls. He comes back at the first half of the rapture and takes us out of here. He comes and gets his bride. There's a, there is a, a, a judgment time for that, a honeymoon time for that. And then we're going to be coming back with him to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And guess what? That's what a, bride, a bridegroom does. He goes, he finds a bride, he secures the marriage, the marriage supper takes place, they go to the marriage supper of the Lamb is what we're going to do. And guess what? The bride, where, where does the bride and the groom go? Well, you say, well, they may go on an airplane, or they may go to some place. No, no, not really. You know, what? what's the next place? Where are they going to live? They are going to go home together to the home that Jesus is building for them. Wow. You meet your bride, you marry her, you honor her, you go to the celebration, you take the honeymoon, and then you go home together. And forever, and it's to, forever, it's to be together forever, without end, amen? That's exactly what Jesus is doing. Because once we get out of here, we're going to be with him wherever he is, and wherever he goes, and what he comes after that, he's going to come and, and deliver us to that to our home in New Jerusalem. But there'll be some other homes. There's going to be a brand new earth that's going to stay full of people. A brand new kingdom age that will never die. A brand new heaven. 
All of the creation of God is there. And the kings of the earth will bring their glory up into the holy city. All right. But look here. After he said, you come, I want you to see something. And I want you to see something right now. And don't miss this. Come hither. I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a high, to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Hey, I want to show you your brand new home. Guess what it is? The holy city. It seems to me that this statement came right after, I'm going to show you the, the wife of the, of, of, of the lamb, and I'm going to show you the bride, and the next thing he shows us is a holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. Here's your new home. Amen? Have you got an idea of where your new home is going to be? I know where I'm, my new home is going to be. That's amazing. And it just seems to me like the way this is written with the, with the time spread, because nobody else can be the bride. Only the bride can be the bride. Only the bride can be the wife. And he shows me the new Jerusalem coming down. This is your home. All right? So it could it be that maybe the bride's the only one that will be through the pearly gates into the city? But I'm sure God will, wherever he's got your mansion or wherever he's got your place, will be happy. But everyone that's going to be in heaven, whether they're inside the, the celestial city of God or whether they're on the new earth or whether they're on the new heaven, you know, everyone's going to be happy in heaven. Amen? No matter what. Because the place that God has for you is the place that you have deserved to live. And his blessings are upon you. All right? Now, having the glory of God and the light was like unto the stone most precious. Now, I've got five minutes, so I'm just going to read you some benefits of, of, of my home. Okay? It all is, is described in Revelation chapter 21. And we only have a chapter and a half of heaven. And it had a great wall and high and 12 gates. And at the gates, 12 angels and names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. On the east, three gates, and on the north, three gates, and on the south, three gates, and on the west, three gates. Hey, I only have one gate into my backyard. There's 12 gates. Hey, Amen. I think the Lord does a pretty good job, don't you? And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden gree, a reed, to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. And the city lieth for square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furloings, the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall of the city an hundred and forty and four cubits, according to the measure of a man that is of an angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto transparent glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stone, the first foundation of jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcony, and the fourth emerald, and the fifth sarnix, and the sixth sardis, the seventh uh, chrysolite, and the eighth beryl, 
and the ninth, Topaz, and the tenth, a Chrysophorus, and the eleventh, a Jasoneth, and the twelfth, an Amethyst. Pretty good stones, amen? You're lucky if you can have one of them. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold as transparent glass. Wow. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and his Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of sun nor moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them that are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there, and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it, and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh an abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Once you're saved and your name's in that Lamb's book of life, it's going to be a brand new home. It's paradise. Chapter 22. And he showed me a pure river of the water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, there was a tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. I guess there will be eating in heaven. Amen. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing, the healing of the nations. There shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. I heard Brother Aaron saying all the time, you know, you know you're going to be serving God there. You might as well start down here. Amen. Get, get used to it, because that's what's going to happen. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their forehead. And there shall be no night there, no need of a candle, neither to the light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light. And they shall reign forever and ever. That is some place you will never go back from. You'll always be there. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true, and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angels to show unto his servants the things which shortly be done. And then he said, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of this book. Amen? I said it once, I'll say it again. Wait till you see my new home. You know, we'll be close neighbors, I'm sure. Amen? Because my home will be your home. And it's a wonderful thing just to think and get just a little glimpse of heaven. Amen? So don't worry. If you're unhappy with the things in your home, just hang on. You'll have a new one, and it'll be something you can't even imagine. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the time. Thank you for the precious scripture. Thank you for your goodness and your love and your mercy and your grace. I pray you bless our morning service in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.